Good morning. Welcome. To take a few moments just to remember that today is the day of Pentecost, and when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, but also remember that we still need the Holy Spirit even today. So we're going to remind ourselves that God's Spirit is the Spirit of love and kindness and goodness. And so we're going to sing our first hymn, which is number 400. And 91, love divine or love's excelling, number 491. Shall we stand to sing? <laughs> Thank you. 
When we use the old servant book greeting, and I say the Lord is here, we say the Spirit is with us. The Lord is here. The Spirit. I think that is one of those things which I really like saying, but it does remind us that God's presence is with us by His Spirit whenever we meet. He's here now this morning. We meet in His presence. We know that He is here. Over the page on page two, we pray for them. Almighty God, to whom all hearts all desires and all, and from whom no secrets are hidden, tens of thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Near Lord Sidney, we continue to pray. And we're going to say together that reminder of the commandments in the page two. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Lord, the Lord our God is the only one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. Our commandment greater than me. These two commandments thank all the Lord and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. What God has prepared for those who love Him, He has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love us. We're going to read the second confession on page three. Most merciful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our heart. We have not loved our neighbours and others in your mercy. Forgive what we do. Help us to amend what we do and direct what we shall do, that we may do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Our Lord we ask God to speak to our hearts and minds, centre of who we are the reassurances of his forgiveness. Almighty God forgives all who truly repent. He has had mercy upon you. 
He has pardoned and delivered you from all your sins. He's confirming and strengthening you in all goodness. And he will keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. And with those who are forgiven, we stand and praise God together as we say the glory. Glory to God in the and peace in the people of God. Lord of God, heavenly, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your word. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, we see you our prayer. For you alone, you alone, you alone are the most Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. So as we stand, let us pray. We call it all Pentecost Sunday. Holy Spirit. Sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love. And renew the face of the earth. In Jesus Christ our Lord. We repeat it for our first reading. Reading from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound, like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each other. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Preference from the Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoke and mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, 
before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Next to him is number 87. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life and your number 87. We remain standing for the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you. Lord. For the evening on the first day of the week, when the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit that we might be led into your truth. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Please be seated. So today in the life of the church, we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit 
on that first day of Pentecost in Jerusalem. And it follows on from Ascension Day. So on Ascension Day, Jesus says to the disciples, wait a while until you receive the Holy Spirit. And then when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the world. And the fulfillment of that is then in the Acts reading on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit is poured out upon the early church, upon his people. Um, and just in case you, you hadn't spotted it, that it says on his disciples, and that includes both men and women. It wasn't just men up in the upper room, it wasn't just 11 of them or 12 of them. There were men and women were there. Um, and that there are a whole lot of people around um, doing, being involved in the same thing. And those quotes from Joel remind us that it's upon the sons and daughters, upon the slave, both men and women, that the Holy Spirit is poured out. So we have to remember that in those days, that the expectation was that it was only men who could do holy things. Wrong. Probably wrong on so many levels, not least in my experience, women are much better at holy things than men anyway. But that's another as a subject. But the idea simply is that the Holy Spirit is poured out on all of God's people to fulfill his promise from the very beginning of time. See, the Holy Spirit was at work in the very beginning in creation. The Holy Spirit wasn't a new invention which came on the day of Pentecost and God said, oh, I know what I need now is, but rather simply the Holy Spirit was already at work. It's by the Spirit of God brooding over, says in Genesis, that the world came into being. The word was spoken, which is Jesus, but it's the Spirit of God which was brooding over those things. So it's the word and the Spirit which brought hold of creation to be. And right the way through the Old Testament, you get the Holy Spirit coming upon people at times and places for particular events, particular things, particular areas of ministry, sometimes prophetic, sometimes in the works of great art. So the building of the temple, we're told, was done by the Spirit's anointing upon people. The building of the Ark of the Covenant was God's Spirit anointing people for that. There was the, the coming of the law, the Holy Spirit coming upon Moses and the leading of him, him leading the people into the promised land. All those things were signs of the Spirit of God coming. But also sometimes coming to give power to the people to win the battles that they were facing. So you get this picture of the Holy Spirit is at work right the way through the Old Testament. And there were these promises that one day, rather than being limited to occasions and circumstances, it would be freely poured out upon all people. And that's what's fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. And it's profoundly important because without the coming of the Holy Spirit, we cannot do the things that God calls us to do. I don't know about you, but when I was um, younger, especially, especially when I was at work, that the way it used to work was that the, the manager would say to you, right, I need this done, go and do it. And because I've been trained and skilled, and well, reasonably trained and sort of barely skilled, um, I would then go and do the thing that I was told to do. Because that's how it worked, was the manager said do it, you did it within what you could, your competence did, of what you were able to do. But in the kingdom of God, it doesn't work like that. It's not saying, right, well, God wants you to go and do this, now go and do it. And when you've done it, report back and tell him that you've done it. But rather it's that the Holy Spirit comes to equip us so that we might go and do the things of God in the way that God wants to die and leads us in them. So that it's a call to be dependent upon God in the things we do, not just in the direction of the things that we should do. That makes sense the difference. It's subtle, but it's important. It's not doing it ourselves, but it's letting God do it in us and with us and through us by his Holy Spirit. It's called to be dependent upon God's Spirit at work in you and me. Rather than saying, well, I know how to do this, so I don't need God to help. That's my human response so often, isn't it? I know how to do this. Don't have to tell me how to do it. Children do that, don't they, all the time? I don't need you to I can do it. Maybe sometimes they make it a bit less good. But, but that's, and then that really sometimes we've got. So the Holy Spirit is poured out upon all God's people to equip us be the people of God, so that his plans and purposes are fulfilled. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus. Some people are a bit worried about the Holy Spirit, or what's 
What's the spirit of God like? Well, you look at Jesus, because we're told he's the spirit of Jesus. So the very powerful qualities that Jesus has is the very character and quality of the Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of God. So the character of God is revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. And when the Spirit comes, he brings God's presence to us. So again, the Holy Spirit is, is in the character of God. Holy, righteous, compassionate, graceful, full of love and kindness, full of the kingdom of God. And the Spirit comes to be in us and through us. And the Spirit comes for a particular purpose or particular purposes. First of all, the Spirit comes to reassure us that we are included. He comes to speak to us to say, you are my children. That by the Spirit we can cry out, Daddy, Daddy, to our Father in heaven. Through the Spirit, Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 1, that we are adopted into the Holy Spirit and the Spirit comes, adopted into the family of God, and that the Holy Spirit comes to remind us, to reassure us that that's the truth. He's a down payment, a guarantee for all that God has promised for us. So that we've got a foretaste, an experience that we are part of God's family. So the Spirit of God comes to reassure us that we are included. We're not here by mistake. We're not strangers. Yes, we are adopted, but we're adopted with all the rights of full children. That the Spirit of God is poured out upon us in the same way the Spirit was poured out upon Jesus in his life and his ministry. We are part of the family of God. Beloved of the Father. But then also the Holy Spirit comes to grow in us the character of Christ. The Galatians tells us the fruit of the Spirit. When the Spirit is at work within us, we grow into Christ by character. When you look at the fruit of the Spirit of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and helpfulness and self control, they are the character of Jesus. They're what he was like. The Spirit comes to grow in us the presence, the character of Jesus in all its fullness. So that there is that sense of being transformed. Because we've been grafted onto the right sort of root stock. We've got a pear tree at home. And if my pear tree started and putting forth plums, I'd get very worried. If my courgette plants that I planted started producing tomatoes, I'd be very worried. Even worse, if they instead of producing tomatoes or courgette, they started producing weeds, it would be even worse, wouldn't it? That the Spirit comes to grow in us the character of Jesus, and that therefore that we will take on his, with the fruit is us, taking on the character and nature of Jesus. And we're grafted on to good rootstock to enable us to grow in the right way. The picture of the vine in John 15. That we are grafted into so that we grow the character of Jesus. So the Spirit comes to reassure us that yes, we're in, we're included, we've been picked. We're part of the family where we're, we're included in all that God has got. But also the Spirit comes to help us to grow to be more like Jesus. But also the Spirit comes to equip us to do the things of God. And so on the day of Pentecost, we see that the disciples, breaking out onto the street, start proclaiming the word and works of God. But the Spirit comes to equip us with the tools of the kingdom. That the things that Jesus did, we're told that we should be doing also. How do we do that? Because the Holy Spirit equips us with the right tools at the right time. So the fruit of the Spirit, of prophecy, of, of words of wisdom and words of knowledge, of healing, and, and of all those things that we, we, we look at, they wouldn't that be nice if I could do that and then scared in case God does do it? Um, that God's Spirit works those in us and through us. The right tool for the right circumstance in the right way. Because the Spirit comes, it's like that part of it is the Holy Spirit giving us the toolbox of the kingdom of God. And it's the right tool for the right place at the right time. Have you ever tried changing a nut with a hammer and a screw, a screwdriver? You can do it, but it's really hard work. You want to have the right tool, don't you? And the Holy Spirit comes to equip us with the tools of the kingdom of God so that we might live out that call to take his loving kindness out of the world. So the Spirit of God comes, not just on the early church, but also on us. And there's a sign of that, that the Spirit of God doesn't come on an individual, but comes corporately as well. 
So yes, the Spirit came on each of the disciples, but the Holy Spirit came on all the disciples together. And I think there's something about that idea that together we fulfill, we show something more of the nature of the kingdom of God, and that the Spirit works better when we're doing it together than when we're doing it on our own. So God has poured out his Spirit, not just upon the early church, but upon us. So that the kingdom may come here on earth as it already is in heaven. That we're our commission, if you like, is to bring about the kingdom. And that's both by proclaiming the words of God and doing the works of God so that others might see and experience the goodness of God, the holiness of God, the love of God. The good news is that whether you like it or not, you have the Holy Spirit within you. Just to reassure you, then the Spirit goes to some churches that they will to be seeking the Holy Spirit. You've got to, I don't think it works like that. I think the Holy Spirit is poured out upon all people. We cannot even say Jesus is Lord except by the work of the Holy Spirit. But there's a difference, I think, between having the Holy Spirit because we received him because that's what happens to all Christians and benefiting from the Holy Spirit. I discovered in my robes. The other day, yes, it's still here. I don't know about that. Um, a Lindor chocolate egg. <laughs> I like Lindor chocolate eggs, they're really nice. And somebody gave it to me on Easter Sunday. And because I was busy and I was rushing off somewhere else, I stuck it in my pocket and I'd eat that later and I'd get round to it. And it's still there. It looks nice, I know it'll taste nice. But it won't actually benefit me till I actually take it out of this lap and begin to use it for its intent. And it's the same with the Holy Spirit. That God said, my spirit is poured out for you. The spirit is in you already. Are you willing to not just receive him, receive her, because actually in the Old Testament it's her as well as him, and the New Testament is somehow neutral, not either, neither male nor female, but both. So just confuse you and complicate it. But it doesn't really matter what the Spirit of God is like in that sense. So whether we receive the Spirit of God and let the Spirit of God work in us to reassure us, to grow the character of Jesus, and to equip us to do the word and works of God. Do we take, let the Spirit unwrap, or let us unwrap the Holy Spirit, so that our lives benefit from the Spirit's work? That's the invitation to us. And my prayer is, God, I want to be better letting your spirit work within me. There's a temptation to think because of the day of Pentecost. It's a one-off event. The spirit comes, the church starts, and that's it, and then they get on with it again. But it's not, because it's an ongoing process, and you read a bit later on that, so the spirit falls upon them in power again. And then when Peter and John are in prison, the spirit falls again. The spirit is continually falling upon the people of God, renewing and equipping the reading. And we need to continually be receiving the Holy Spirit, letting the Spirit fall upon us. Not because he's not already there, but it's letting the Spirit flow out of us, to work in us and through us. And we do that together. Let's be still for a moment. You might want to just ask God in a fresh way. Remind you that his spirit is at work in you. So let his peace be born in your heart. Let his love and reassurance satisfy the longings of who we are. Give permission for the spirit to lead us into all the things you have us do and be. The calm Holy Spirit we ask, and in a fresh way this morning, fill us in you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. We turn to page seven of our further books. 
and we stand and affirm our faith together in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the all, maker of heaven, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally the God of the Father, God from God, light from God, through God and through God, begotten of one being with the Father, through him all things are created. For us and for our salvation, we came down. For our faith, he was crucified out of God. He started there. And on the third day, he rose again in a corner of his feet. He ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and his kingdom will have him. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord to give you a power. We proceed from the Father and the Son. We the Father and the Son, who worship and work. We have spoken to the Father. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and understanding. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection and the life of the world. Please be seated. A very brief notices before we move to prayer. Um, first thing is that you'll notice that we've started changing the music that we use so that it'll have words accompanying the hymns. Um, that sometimes means that the words which they're singing on there are not quite the same as in the book, but God can cope with both versions being sung at the same time. So feel free to, especially if they're singing possibly more traditional versions sometimes as well. But I'm working on slowly building up a repertoire where they're the same as the hymn books, but it takes time to find them. But also as part of that process, what we're going to try and do is um, change the way that hymns are chosen. So that the invitation is to let me know your favourite hymns. Let me know the hymns you like, perhaps new hymns you've heard you think we'd like to sing that, or old hymns which you've not sung for a long time. But to try and build up a, a repertoire of hymns which are ones that we're familiar with, so that we can sing them with confidence and with gusto. But then also then we've got space to learn one or two new ones on a regular basis, but not all in one service, because there's nothing worse than when you end up with five hymns you don't know, you think, well, that, so, so we can get the balance right, and possibly introduce a bit more hymnody and songs into our worship, so there's more space for that, and slightly less, um, I want to go to words, and more singing, because I think that's the way we need to go. So if you've got suggestions for hymns, there will be um, next week on the notice sheet an invitation to send them to me either by email, but also I'm hoping to put in back of each church a book where you can just put in. And don't just put one hymn, because I suspect we have lots of favourites. And the idea is to build up a library for each church of ones which people like, so that together we can um, just do that. And then if you don't like it, it probably means somebody else does, so you'll have to put up with it anyway. Um, so that's where we're going with hymns into the future. So now we're going to pray together, and Dillis is going to come and lead us in our prayer. After the words with our whole selves, we pray. Please respond, come, Holy Spirit of God. With our whole selves we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit of God. As the body of Christ in the power of the Spirit, let us pray. For a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the people of God, with our whole selves, we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, for all to know you and honour your name. For the healing of nations and bringing order out of chaos. With our whole selves, we pray, come. come. Holy Spirit of God. 
Holy Spirit, breathing life into all creatures. Refresh, renew, restore your people. With our whole selves, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit of God. For those whose lives feel empty or cheated or filled with pain, worry or guilt, give hope and joy. With our whole selves, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit of God. For those who walk the dark journey of death, for those who mourn and are distressed or angry with God at their loss, with our whole selves we pray. Come, Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, giver of love, kindle our hearts. Fill your church, our hearts and minds with love. Merciful Father, I thank these for the sake of your son, our Savior. One of the signs of the coming of the Spirit of God is that God's peace comes and is with his people. So we're going to share a little peace. Before we can share peace, we need to receive peace. So just a few moments before we turn and share peace with each other, just to ask God to fill us afresh with his peace. Let his peace be poured out for us. And if that's helpful, you may want to hold your hand open in front of you just at the time that you want to receive God's peace. God has made us one, and he has set his seal upon us as a pledge of what is to come, given us his spirit to dwell in our hearts. Come, spirit of peace with us in Jesus' name. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Share with those around you a sign of peace. Next hymn is number 62. Be still for the presence of the Lord. Holy One, this is number 62. For the presence of the
Just be still for a moment, standing or kneeling or sitting, and letting God's Spirit be present amongst you and in you. We bring before you, Heavenly Father, the fruits of your creation, the offering of our lives, and the gifts of the fruits of our labors, so that by standing order or direct debit or in the plate at the back. Heavenly Father, we bring all these things, knowing that all things come from you, and of your own do we give you. On page 22, we're going to use prayer B. Yeah, that's page 22 and prayer B. I'm going to use the preface for Pentecost. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let be right. Our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord. And this day we give you thanks, because in the fulfillment of your promise, you pour out your Spirit upon us, filling us with your gifts, leading us into all truth and uniting people of many tongues in the confession of one faith. Your spirit gives us grace to call you Father and to proclaim your gospel to all nations, to serve you as a royal priest. For we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all those in whom the spirit dwells, proclaim the glory of your name, and praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Oh, Sam, in my eyes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, Sam, in my eyes. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, this gift of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same manner that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. It is my blood of you come, shed for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has died. Christ has died. So, Father, calling to mind Jesus' death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. And your Holy Spirit on your people. And gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. In Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty God, forever and ever. Coming back to page 12. As Jesus himself was called. So we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass. Lead us not in heaven, but deliver us from heaven. For thine to see the power and the glory for everyone. We break this bread, share in the body of Christ. Though we are, we are one body, because we all share. Jesus, now have mercy. Jesus, Continuing to share communion, simply by inviting you to come forward to the front of the chance of the steps there, and one time, as I will dip the waiter in the wine, and we'll share bread and wine together at the same time. So now let's draw near the table, receiving the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave us, and his blood, which he shed. Let us eat and drink, remember that he died for us, and feed on him in our hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. We say together the prayer in the middle of page 15. Most merciful, your love and love, our hands, our hearts, we were not fit even to eat the crumbs from unto us. You are with the precious body and blood of your son, he made it easy. and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat
Let us pray. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us the Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of light, open our lips by your Spirit that every tongue may come to your glory. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We move on page 16. We pray today. Almighty. We thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and The only problem with not having an organ is, is that sometimes I set up things wrongly on the computer. I don't know when to play this next, the final hymn for the service at Berkeley this morning. It wasn't there. Um, I put on the wrong tune. So we're going to have to sing it accompanied by me on a guitar, which means you're going to have to sing louder than me. So we sing, Beast, Thou My Vision, no, Lord of My Heart, number 66. Shall we stand and sing? <laughs> Be thou my 
Bless it upon us, and then we're going to go and have tea and coffee. Hopefully, if you'd like to join us. If, however, you'd like just to receive prayer for anything, whether that's for something that the Holy Spirit be speaking to you about, or healing, or just if you'd like to have laying on of hands for a bit more of the Holy Spirit, if that's if that makes sense, then please do come and join me. I'll be just standing at the communion rail for a few minutes at the end of the service. But now let's ask God for this. Now may the Spirit of truth lead you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. So we go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. For the rest of this. Amen.